in the fitness space, many people have a focus on losing weight. But if you dig a bit deeper, the goal is oftentimes not just weight loss, but to lose fat and at least maintain muscle at the same time. If you just lose a ton of body fat by dieting aggressively and doing lots of cardio, this can lead to muscle loss and you losing your muscle definition. Reducing body fat while at least maintaining muscle is what's responsible for a lean and athletic physique. So in today's video, I will show you four science-based steps that you can take to maximize fat loss without losing muscle. Let's dive straight into it by discussing the first step, having a moderate calorie deficit. We can't work around the need for a calorie deficit when it comes to fat loss, but how large your calorie deficit is has important consequences for how well you are able to maintain muscle. In a calorie deficit, your body uses stored energy reserves to compensate for the lower calorie intake you are maintaining. Usually there is enough body fat laying around to be used as fuel if you are in a moderate calorie deficit. But when it comes to restricting your calories more aggressively, that's where your body has to tap into alternative energy reserves because there is a larger calorie deficit to compensate for. With a large calorie deficit, your body is more likely to use other tissues like muscle proteins for fuel. This helps explain why research typically shows better muscle maintenance with more moderate calorie deficits. In previous videos, I had already presented the study by Garth and colleagues that showed a slow weight loss rate was more effective for muscle maintenance than a fast weight loss rate. For people looking to lose as much fat as possible while maintaining muscle, a good weight loss rate to aim for is about 0.5 to 1% body weight loss per week. So for a 200 pound male, losing between 1 to 2 pounds per week is a good aim. This rate of weight loss can typically be achieved by maintaining a calorie deficit of about 20%. On the screen, you can find an example calculation of the fat loss calories of someone that burns roughly 2,500 calories per day. Next, let's discuss the training side of things, specifically prioritizing lifting weights over doing cardio. This may sound counterintuitive. Many people think once the fat loss phase starts, it's time to decrease the amount of lifting weights you do and start doing more cardio to burn calories. While some cardio is beneficial and I would even suggest doing at least one or two cardio sessions per week for general health purposes, lifting weights remains critical when it comes to muscle maintenance in a fat loss diet. If you are in a calorie deficit, your body is in a state of tissue breakdown. We want mostly fat tissue to be broken down, but inevitably muscle protein breakdown also increases. To offset this, you want to stimulate your muscles in your training. You can see your human body as a machine of efficiency. If you actually use and challenge your muscles in training, it won't burn off this muscle because it is perceived as necessary. Your physical demands via training require you to maintain your muscle. This helps explain why research shows that lifting weights is more effective for muscle maintenance in a fat loss diet compared to doing only cardio. In one study, 20 people were split into two groups. One group maintained a calorie deficit and performed cardio four times per week, whereas the other group lifted weights three times per week. Both groups lost the same amount of weight, but the group lifting weights gained 2 pounds of muscle while the cardio group lost 9 pounds of muscle. This intuitively makes sense. If you want to maintain muscle, then keep up the training that has built you the muscle in the first place. The calorie deficit you have created via nutrition is going to be responsible for the fat loss. The training you do with weights will make sure you at least maintain muscle. I suggest anywhere between 3 to 5 strength training sessions per week in a fat loss phase. The third step is consuming enough protein. Protein plays a central role in muscle recovery and muscle development. After all, the amino acids you consume via protein are directly used as building blocks for building up your muscles. But during a fat loss phase, protein becomes even more important than before. There is a good amount of research showing that an elevated protein intake helps with muscle retention while you are in a calorie deficit. In a 2010 study, it was found that a group consuming around 2.3 grams per kilogram of their body weight in protein preserved more muscle than a group consuming only 1 gram per kilogram of their body weight in protein. Based on a 2017 review, a good minimum target to set as your protein intake is having at least 1.6 grams per kilogram of your body weight. It cannot do harm to aim for a slightly higher protein intake of say 1.8 to 2.2 grams per kg of your body weight. This may have benefits for muscle recovery and it could even leave you more satisfied since protein tends to be quite satiating. 
Using a protein supplement like whey protein can also be useful if you find it difficult to consume enough protein via your regular daily meals. Now, you may be wondering how about carbs and fats, the other macronutrients? You can be more flexible when it comes to carbohydrate and fat intake since they don't seem to play a significant role in fat loss when calorie and protein intake are controlled for. I would intuitively balance your carbohydrate and fat intake so that you have enough carbohydrates to fuel your workouts and also get enough fats to support hormonal health. If you have your training, calorie intake and protein intake in check, you're already 90% there for maximizing muscle maintenance during a fat loss phase. But there's another factor that is worth looking into, and that one is specifically refeed days. If you have been in a fat loss phase before, you may have noticed that you tend to feel more fatigued and hungry as you have been dieting for months on end. This makes it harder to control your calorie intake and also results in lower strength performance. Diet breaks are helpful with making the fat loss phase more manageable. One simple way you can implement diet breaks is by using refeed days. With refeed days, you essentially have one or two intentional higher calorie days in the week while maintaining your weekly calorie deficit. So for instance, instead of consuming 2000 calories per day, you consume 1800 calories from Monday to Friday and have two refeed days of 2500 calories on Saturday and Sunday. A recent study found that such refeed days have beneficial effects on muscle maintenance, probably because the refeed days allow for improved training performance by increasing glycogen levels. Incorporating refeed days are especially useful if your weekends involve a more challenging food environment and you can benefit from having a slightly higher calorie target. Giving yourself more calories to work with on the weekends can help make it easier for you to sustain your fat loss diet. So to sum up, you can lose fat without losing muscle by focusing on the four following steps. Maintain a moderate calorie deficit of about 20%. Focus on lifting weights as your main form of exercise. Consume enough protein while maintaining a balanced carbohydrate and fat intake. And lastly, incorporate regular refeed days, especially if your calorie intake is usually higher anyway on the weekends. And that is all for today's video. I know it has been a while since I uploaded my last video because I was busy with finishing up my master's degree, but we got a master's degree in the pocket now so I can focus on making weekly videos again. If you want to stay updated, then subscribe to the channel, leave me a thumbs up if you found this video helpful, and I will see you in the next video.